Brew Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the top-tier brewing stand. Visit them online at BlickmanEngineering.com. for the beer radio you've been looking for. This is the show that dispels myths, tackles the toughest topics, and makes no apologies for geeking out on beer. Hosted by two guys that drink before they think. Jamil Zainashev and John Palmer. This is Brew Strong. Hey, howdy, hey, my brewing brothers and sisters. Greetings, greetings. <laughs> ah, it's good to be back. Yes. My thoughts exactly. It's been a while. I've yeah. been on the road. You've been on the road. Oh, yeah. Uh, Porno Steve's been on the road. That's right. Bevo's just been sitting around here doing nothing. Well, waiting for us to get back. She's, she's been on the road to get here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she can't talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's fine. I'm used to it. Being left behind. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Still here. There, you, there you go. We count on you. Yep, 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 yep. I went off to uh, e- Europe and did a, uh, a wonderful uh, uh, trip through uh, the Netherlands and Sweden and uh, France and England. And then uh, Porno Steve, you went off and uh, played a band uh, guitar hero in uh, yeah in, uh, in various places. Austin, Texas. We Austin. did a bunch of places on the way to Austin. Yeah. To uh, play South by Southwest. <laughs> yes. Oh, <God>. No, dude. <laughs> Tulare. Oh, Tulare. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> turd, turd Lari, yes. Yes. <laughs> what did I think of that? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was a ghost town there. It's sad. <laughs> yes. And Palmer, you were off in, uh, what, Spain Brazil and, and Brazil? And... and Spain. There you go. Yeah. We um, are just a bunch of world and... Uh, Central Valley Travelers. <laughs> That's huh? right. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Central Valley, a mysterious... Good for you guys. <laughs> you too could travel to the Central Valley if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Hard pass. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> but the pass is. <laughs> Speaking of hard, um, how about that uh, great John Blickman? Oh, yeah. He's hard man to keep up with. Hard man to keep up with. Hey, that's better than what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> he is, uh, uh, you know, a great guy, a, a great inventor, and a great, uh, you know, a, a great friend and a great, uh, a great sponsor. And um, he has been paying for this show, uh, so you don't have to for what at least ten years now, I think. Yeah, about ten years. Yeah, that's yeah, a long uh, time he's... to be paying for. It. That's, that's like, uh, you know. Some and cable he still bill. thinks it's worthwhile. Well, maybe he just doesn't know. Maybe, maybe you know, all that brilliance comes at a cost, and he's just yeah. not able to properly evaluate. He doesn't have common sense. <laughs> yeah, maybe he lacks or common sense. Or maybe our listeners are actually sending him emails at <gasps> feedback at BlickmanEngineering.com there you and go. letting him know how there much they appreciate there the show. There you go. Now you're talking. Yeah, if people do that, then Blickman will keep paying for the show, and then you get the show for free. Yeah. There you go. If you don't do that, Blickman stops paying for the show. <laughs> Nobody can pay for the show. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to pay for the show. The show goes away. So all it takes is like a little email, maybe browsing their website and telling them, hey, I checked out the new uh, Riptide pump or the, the Cornicle or any of those other really cool inventions that he's got. Um, you know, or if you're going to be in Portland at the conference, you go and you see them and say, hi. Uh, thank you for sponsoring uh, Bruce Strong. I really appreciate it. I enjoyed downloading it for free and listening to it. Thank you. And uh, that's all it takes. Yeah. That's all you got to do to, uh, instead of paying money for the show, that's all you got to do. Send some emails, mm-hmm. browse some websites, walk up there and say hi to a very nice person who will uh, uh, chat with you very nicely about whatever you want to chat about on brewing. It's a good guy. So check it out, BlickmanEngineering.com, or send an email to feedback at BlickmanEngineering.com, or see him at the conference. 
All right, today, today we are talking about uh, adjuncts. Yeah, indeed. I've always, uh, you know, it's interesting to me that uh, you know, I, I, it's not like I've been in craft beer for a hundred years. I've been in craft beer since like '99. Um, yeah. and I've seen, you know, from from back then, it was kind of like, oh no, 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 no. We, we don't brew with any adjuncts. Every brew is like, oh, no adjuncts, please. It's all right, right in heights about It's all, uh, you know, yeast and water and malt and hops, and I'll never put anything else in there ever. Um, and, and, and a big reason for it was, you know, adjuncts were thought of as uh, rice at Budweiser, corn at Coors, you know, anything that, uh, you know, uh, yeah. cheap, cheap, big beer was the thought. Right. Right. Even though a lot of times rice is more expensive than, than barley malt or corn is more expensive, you know, yeah. um, it still was thought, well, you know, that's, that's just, you know, not the kind of beer I want to make. I will never use adjuncts. It had a bad reputation, even though a lot of like the Belgian brewers were doing, uh, uh, you know, candy sugar and things like that, which is also an, an adjunct. That's right. But, uh, you know, fast forward, what is it, 20 years? I don't know, something like that, yeah. 15, you know, uh, 15 years. And there's fruits, there's sugars, there's different grains. There's all sorts of crap being thrown in beers now. And that's what's exciting to people. You know, people don't want, like, a, just a really well-made pale ale they don't want a really well made uh you know Meritson. they don't want you know well, they, they want, want a, something um, they fancy they want a new england style strawberry milkshake right right with lactose ipa and, with yeah exactly lactose sugar. lactose and fruit and yeah uh, you know it's amazing to me how radically it's changed in just this this short period of time that's right but it you know it's a matter of, you know and what i'm trying to say is that adjuncts can make beer interesting and that's mm -hmm. that's the real name mm -hmm. of the game uh creating interesting flavorful beer uh not just thin beer cheap beer right it's uh it's creating interesting well, beer, and be. that and that's what today's adjuncts are all about yeah it can be used for for anything i mean if you yeah. want a beer to come out lighter in malt character you know adjuncts you want it to be heavier in malt character you want to add all these other flavors it's um you know all of that's possible yeah. And um, in it's, fact, it's, there's very few beer styles that are are adjunct free. Right. It's 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 a tool. It is. Right. It's it's a it's a tool in your arsenal to do something. It it isn't necessarily a bad thing anymore. It's it's just something that you use as a brewer. Mm -hmm. Like you know yeah. different kinds to of brew hops. better beer. Yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, John, why don't you start us off? Define for us what an adjunct is. Well, an adjunct is basically any uh, non-enzymatic fermentable or starch source uh, or sugar that is added to the wort. Um, we say non-enzymatic to distinguish it from a malt. So, um, for example, uh, roast barley is mm -hmm. not malted. Mm -hmm. That's an adjunct. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, raw wheat um, or flaked wheat are both adjuncts. Mm -hmm. So our flaked oats, flaked rye, all your flaked grains really are, you know, are they're um, pre-cooked to some degree by mm -hmm. flaking. Mm -hmm. um, but those are adjuncts that you would put in the mash. Because they create... have no enzyme activity. If you were to soak them in water, yeah, you're just getting wet. Themselves. <laughs> you're getting wet material. You're not getting any sort of a conversion to sugar. Right. There's just a starch source that the enzymes in the malt, in the barley malt, can then t uh, take advantage of and break down into sugars. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have your refined sugars that you know can be anything from table sugar, sucrose, to Belgian candy sugar, uh, less refined sugars like molasses, um, milk sugar, lactose. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, honey. Is another good example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lots of different um, what about, sugars. What about fruits? Adjuncts. Pardon? Fruits. Oh yes, and fruits, of course. Mm -hmm. Vegetables. Um, vegetables, squash, pumpkin beers. That's an adjunct. Potatoes, mm -hmm. a great adjunct. Um, yeah, all kinds of all kinds of fermentable 
or potentially fermentable starch, mm -hmm. starches and sugars are adjuncts. Okay. And if it's not potentially fermentable, if it's, um, uh, you know, some sort of herb or some sort of spice or something like that, or I don't know what else, rocks, <laughs> you know, yeah. those would well, strictly, be, you know. Strictly in, flavorings uh -huh. uh, are, well, or say like gelatin uh -huh. uh, are just simply additives, mm -hmm. um, processing okay. aids. Spices are spices. They're flavor additives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they are they are not uh, adjuncts because they're not fermentables. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. not a source of, you know, uh, ferment, fermentation. Right, right. <clears throat> okay, that makes sense. That's a good way to uh, think of categorizing things. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do this. Let's take a short break. And when we come back... I want to kind of dive into uh, uh, some of the, you know, the, the popular adjuncts that you might use and, uh, uh, you know, how you might how you might start uh, using those in your in your beers. We'll be back right after this. The 21st Amendment. Watch out! Do you like beer? They make beer. Watch out! Do you like friends and fun? They make friends and fun. Watch Do out! Do you still like to have a good time? The 21st Amendment. Watch out! The 21st Amendment in San Francisco, located at 563 2nd Street, two blocks from the building where baseball is seen and played. Try their beers in the pub or try them in the can. Featuring... Monk's Blood. Made with real monk. Watch out! So why not have the best time of your life? Go to the 21A and Sean O'Sullivan will personally greet you with a can of... Monk's Blood. The 21st Amendment. Watch out! This advertisement is not in any way affiliated nor associated with the 21st Amendment Bar and Pub, nor its subsidiaries or affiliates. This telecast is not copywritten by the 21st Amendment for the private use of the Brewing Network. Any use of this telecast without Jamil Zanishev's consent is prohibited. Suck it, JP. Your support of the Brewing Network means everything to us. We couldn't produce shows without you. And we love giving you something extra for that support, like... Brew Your Own Magazine. You already know it's a great brewing magazine full of recipes, equipment how-tos, discussions of beer styles, and brewing techniques. Whether you're new to brewing and just starting out or you're an old pro, you'll always learn something from the articles in Brew Your Own. Plus, there are amazing special issues like plans for building a Brutus 10 system, 250 classic clone recipes, and the Home Brewer's Answer Book. Brew Your Own Magazine and BYO.com are awesome resources for any brewer. Whether for yourself or as a gift, when you subscribe or resubscribe from the Brewing Network homepage, you directly support programs like this. Get a great magazine and support the Brewing Network. Subscribe to Brew Your Own right from the thebrewingnetwork.com. Are you a member of the White Labs Customer Club? If not, you should be. It's the easiest way to earn free stuff for turning in your old homebrew labels from either vials or pure pitch. All you have to do is save your labels and redeem them for things like free yeast, an exclusive White Labs t-shirt or sweatshirt, and even the opportunity to brew with the yeast man himself, Chris White. Signing up is easy. Just go to whitelabs.com slash customer club, fill out the registration form, and then mail in your labels. They will return the favor by sending you awesome White Labs swag. Go sign up today at whitelabs.com slash customer club. White Labs, pure yeast and fermentation since 1995. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and freshest ingredients and the best customer service in the business. Check out their brand new patent-pending mash and boil 110-volt electric mashing and boiling unit. This compact all-stainless unit lets you mash, sparge, and boil just about anywhere that has a 110-volt plug. Double wall construction adds to efficiency and safety, and a precise thermostat keeps temperatures where you want them. Unlike insulated buckets and converted coolers, multiple temperature rest mashing is easy to do. All for under 300 bucks. They also feature the Mark II Work Pump, a magnetic drive high temperature pump that does the work of pumps that cost twice as much, as well as exclusive Brewer's Edge regulators and quality Keg King kegs and disconnects. Check them out today at williamsbrewing.com to bruise their vast selection. Do you know the three most important rules in brewing? Sanitation, sanitation, and sanitation. And no one does it better than Five Star Chemicals. Five Star knows sanitation. You can only sanitize clean equipment. And Five Star knows how to clean, too. 
For craft brewers and home brewers, Five Star has what you need to keep your fermenters, serving tanks, kegs and draft lines sparkling and free of any beer spoiling bacteria. PBW, caustic, acid cleaners, star sand, Santa clean, lubricants and defoamers, pH stabilizers and more. Five Star Chemicals has cleaning supplies, safety supplies, heat exchangers, pumps, hoses and valves. And Five Star is proud to offer eco-friendly products that exceed customer expectations. If you have a cleaning problem, you need the Five Star Solution. Visit fivestarchemicals.com or call 800-782-7019. 800-782-7019 and get the Five Star Treatment today. Back to the beer guys that make other beer guys look like wine guys. Brew strong. <laughs> We're back. Talking about uh, driving the big rolling turd out to uh, Portland with Justin. Ah, <laughs> you still have your uh, mutter home, eh? Yeah, Justin has it. Ah. The big rolling turd. Um, uh, but he's saying he's going to take like a week to get out there, and I don't know if I can afford that time. Oh. So I was thinking of flying. Yeah, it's such a short plane hop. Yeah. Unless the engine explodes. Right. <laughs> Yeah, unless the engine explodes, then it's uh, that's inconvenient. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he was saying he might uh, continue on from there. Maybe I'll go with him there. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'd love cool. to. It's a lot of the time. Oh, time! I think we're yeah. all running out of. Um, <clears throat> all right. So back to adjuncts. Yes, those things. Right. So. Let's, uh, should we kind of categorize these into, uh, you know, a couple of categories like, uh, yeah, you know, the sugars, the fruits, the, um, fruits and vegetables maybe, and, um, the, sure. uh, the, the flake grains or the, or the, 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 the grain based, um, right. Adjuncts. Yeah. Yeah. You got, you got, you got your starch sources, um, that you know need to be mashed, mm-hmm. uh, and then you have your sugar sources that can you know maybe go may need to go the into fermenter. the mash, but they could probably just be using the fermenter mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Hot side versus cold side. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess you know the other cereal grains is probably a good place to start and get those out of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know you have barley and <laughs> sorry. <laughs> just getting over <clears throat> cold. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have your barley, which is a you know very popular cereal grain for malting. We did a uh, a malting uh, malts show a few a little while back, uh, a couple months ago, I guess. But um, the thing that makes barley good for malting is the fact it has a husk, and which helps it you know maintain uh, some some fluffiness and fluidity in the grain bed. Mm-hmm. Whereas other uh, grains such as wheat don't, and they are, they're a little bit more trouble to water because the mash seems to be, well, tends not to flow as well. So um, the, you normally crush up your grain and uh, you know, soak it in hot water. The enzymes in the grain would then take over and slowly convert those starches to sugars. But when you have an unmalted grain, um, then you have you still have that protein carbohydrate matrix around those starches, which makes it you know hard to convert. It takes a long time. Um, so really, um, you've got to you've got to get that that starch source um, broken out either by grinding it up or something, and then solubilized in the water so that the uh, enzymes can have access to it, mm-hmm. and this is where the concept of gelatinization comes into play. Uh, we, with barley, uh, the gelatinization temperature is between 60 and 65 degrees C, which is uh, like 135 to 149 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, a little somewhere in there. And in that temperature range, that's where these starches uh, become well hydrated and become soluble in the water, and now they're accessible by the enzymes. Mm-hmm. In the case of other cereal grains, like 
wheat and rye, um, their solubilization temperatures are pretty close to barley. So you can add these flaked adjuncts uh, directly to the mash and they will you know, go into solution, the enzymes will, enzymes will convert them into sugars. Mm -hmm. uh, wheat is uh, similar to barley, um, 58 to 64 degrees Celsius, 135 to 147, so very similar to barley. Uh, rye is a little bit higher uh, in its final temperature, a little broader range, 135 to 158 degrees Fahrenheit, or 57 to 70 C. Oats is, uh, again, similar, 135 F to 162 degrees Fahrenheit, or 57 to 72 degrees C. Now, that higher gelatinization temperature means that if you add these adjuncts, <coughs> you know, in the raw, crushed-up state, mm -hmm. directly to the mash, mm -hmm. and you only took your mash to let's say 65 degrees C or 100 and, you know 150 mm -hmm. um, there would be a portion of those starches in that cereal that really would not ever become uh, hydrolyzed and soluble so you wouldn't get the extract from that uh, starch mm -hmm. it would just stay it would stay hard and stay out of solution um, and the way you address that is by cooking it first and that's what we do with um, higher temperature grains like sorghum, corn, and rice. Uh, these generally need to be pre-cooked um, in what we call a cereal cooker or pot on the stove. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, you, know, you go through the steps of actually cooking them and making them soft and squishy mm -hmm. before you add them to your mash. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that way, you can just add them right in, stir them in. Um, there's good access to the starches, and you'll get you know full extract from those grains. Um, it's essentially just kind of wetting the starch molecules or getting water yeah. next to the starch molecules so that the enzymes can uh, get in attack there those and molecules and break them up. Yeah, the starch sugar. chains can kind of unwind a bit, um, get better access for the enzymes, and then the enzymes can start nipping off the sugars. Mm -hmm. So um, barley, wheat, and rye, and oats, um, if you were going to add them raw they, or, and crushed up, to, um, then they would probably convert pretty well in the mash. Mm -hmm. um, but the most popular form for adding these as adjuncts is in the flaked form. Mm -hmm. And what is flaking? Well, it's, it's a process known as torification. And what you do there is you take the grain and you steam it to cook it. And then you, uh, when, the, when the grain is, has been cooked by steaming, you roll it between a couple of rollers to flatten it out, increase its surface area, and then you dry it. And that produces flaked uh, grains, like your flaked oats that you eat for breakfast in the morning. So this has oh. been, already been pre-gelatinized. They've all been pre-gelatinized, pre-cooked by this steaming and flaking process. Mm -hmm. And the, the flaking process is nice because it gives that, that kernel more surface area, again, giving better access for the enzymes to the, to the starch uh, when it's in your mash. Just and like so they, uh, crushing grain uh, yeah. makes the, the starch more accessible to the, to the mash. Exactly. Now... As I was mentioning, uh, corn and rice, which are, you know, the most widely used adjuncts for brewing, mm -hmm. um, their gelatinization temperatures are higher, and really, you know, above or mostly above typical mash temperatures for barley. So, this is where the use of a cereal cooker or a separate mm -hmm. um, pot in the brewery uh, comes into play, and uh, you know, when you're when you're trying to con to pre-cook, you know, mass quantities of uh, corn and, and rice, you know, like 10 barrels worth. Mm -hmm. um, this is when you would add some portion of barley malt to that uh, cooker because then the enzyme action, you know, a, a, a protease rest and, uh, a, you know, amylase rest 
will all help break up those uh, starches and release those starches mm -hmm. uh, and allow them to cook faster mm -hmm. uh, than just simply boiling alone. Mm -hmm. Boiling, you know, um, you know, a couple tons of corn is pretty energy intensive. So to cut back on that energy use, that's when they add some, some barley and let the enzymes do part of the work. Mm -hmm. But for brewing at home, you don't need to really worry about adding uh, barley mm -hmm. or malt to this, to the cooking process. Simply, you know, throw it in a pot on the stove, put the rice in your rice cooker, you know, cook it as usual, mm -hmm. and then take that cooked grain and add that directly to your mash. Mm -hmm. Seems a lot easier <coughs> just to uh, throw in some flake grains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I, you know, and I've had... Um, several adjunct beers over the years. I mean, both as homebrew and at, at uh, microbreweries. Um, our good friends, the Huda Checks, uh, mm -hmm. made uh, a rice IPA a few years ago at their Oktoberfest party that was very delicious. I mean, um, you know, for a double IPA, instead of using um, corn sugar to thin the body, they mm -hmm. added rice. Mm -hmm. And it made for a very good uh, double IPA. Hmm. So... What sort of percentage do they use? Um, I don't recall. It was probably 10, 15%, somewhere in there, probably 15. Uh-huh. All right. Um, what sort of percentages do you think uh, people are, are generally using in some of these uh, adjuncts? Well, it depends on the style. Mm -hmm. um, I think for beers such as double IPA where you're looking to you know just thin the body a bit, Mm -hmm. um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15, maybe even 20%. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going for a higher adjunct beer, like an American light lager, classic American pills, um, something like that, uh, 25% mm -hmm. uh, is, is, a, is a more no typical number. Um, for just... Um, oh, for something like know, rye of... of I heard people rye, yeah. uh, doing 95% uh, rye beer, you know. Turns yeah. out gluey and snotty and uh, <laughs> doesn't pour well, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question from the chat mm -hmm. pertaining to the rice. Um, I just wanted to go back to it really fast. Uh, granulated instant cereals like cream of rice, cream of wheat, can those be added to the mash? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The problem with, with cereals is that, and especially in the case of cream of wheat, it's uh, iron fortified, so you may end up with uh, you know a significant uh, trace of, amount of iron in the beer. Um, iron and other transition metals such as copper, manganese, and so on. Um, if they make it into the cold side of the beer, um, they will uh, ox act as catalysts for oxidation reactions and impact flavor stability. So um, I, w I would not recommend necessarily um, a commercial breakfast cereal that's been you know, iron fortified, um, but certainly something more uh, pristine or you know, more organic, I suppose, if you will, from like a health food store that doesn't have the, uh, the fortification um, would probably be more appropriate and work quite well. Well, and, uh, you know, uh, your homebrew shop, you want to support them as well. Um, oh, yeah. You know, if you're only saving a, a few cents on something, um, I would suggest that maybe it's better to uh, pick it up at the uh, the homebrew shop and, and get the uh, the flake grains that they sell. Uh, you know, a place yeah. like Great Fermentations out in Indiana, they, uh, you know, they have the best selections. They got uh, uh, every the most Blickman gear uh, on the web of anybody and the most knowledge behind it. Great shop, clean, well run, great people, great customer service, quick shipping on most items, um, you know, a wealth of knowledge, really good people. You can check them out at uh, greatfermentations.com. You can like them on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all the social things that uh, steal all your information. Uh, you can... <laughs> You can like them on that at GR8 uh, Fermentation. Uh, and, uh, yeah, good people. Check them out. Good sponsor. Um, great homebrew shops. I've been there. John's been there. Uh, yeah. We know of what we speak. Um, 
Well, and I also want to mention uh, Grog Tag. Ah. I don't know. Have you have you checked out Grog Tag recently? I haven't. No, but I know they're know their good work from many years past. Well, all right. Uh, apparently they've they've lost their minds because uh, they say <laughs> Norman Bates said it best: a boy's best friend is his mother. And while we can't say we agree 100%, we do think this year mom deserves something cool and custom from Grog Tag for Mother's Day. Go to grogtag.com and shop from hundreds of templates covering all kinds of products that you can modify and make your very own. From coasters of your baby pictures to beer and wine labels with last year's family reunion on them to metal signs of our grandchildren. They have it all. Mother's Day is on May 13th, so start creating over at grogtag.com and use the code BNARMY to save 10% on your order. That's at grogtag.com. All right, uh, let's take another short break, and when we come back, um, you know, one of the things a lot of times people are asking is, you know, things like, uh, okay, uh, oh, it's uh, there's a lot of beta-glucans in there. Do I need a beta-glucan dress? Do I need protein rest what kind of other rests that people need with these uh these uh adjuncts and what are the adjuncts can they just to steep with uh with uh, uh you know if they want to steep with uh you know uh, uh partial mash um with right, extract right. i mean how do they go about that all right let's cover that when we come back right after this Hey, my Bruin brothers and sisters, this is Jamel Zanishef, and I want to tell you about Heretic Evil Twin. You might be familiar with my homebrew recipe, which uses massive late hopping to create a balance between the malty sweet and the hoppy bitter, along with an outrageous malt and hop character. I wanted a beer with the same bold hop and malt character, so we played around with the homebrew recipe until we were able to make a great commercial version too. We've created a beer rich in malt character, full of caramel, toast, biscuit, and an ever so subtle roast note. On top of that, we piled in an insane amount of citra and Columbus hops at the end of the boil, as well as in dry hopping. This damn the cost approach to hopping gives Heretic's Evil Twin a great blast of citrus and tropical fruit that can't be matched by any other hop. The result is a bold, malty, hoppy, but easy drinking beer. This is our top seller, our flagship beer, and I couldn't be prouder of it. Cheers. To find Heretic Beers near you, click on Find Some at hereticbrewing.com. Ken Grossman of Sierra Nevada Brewing Company says making great beer is hard. Making the same great beer every day is harder. Brewers Publications announces its latest release for breweries of any type and size. Quality Management, an essential guide for brewers by Mary Pelletieri. Proper quality management for small, regional, and national breweries is critical. Whether you are an established business or brand new, learn the best ways to create and manage a quality system in your brewery. This book will guide you in developing a comprehensive program that will grow with your brewery, help ensure quality processes in the brewery, and continue providing great beer for your fans. Quality management for breweries is critical for continued success. This guidebook teaches you to integrate quality management in every level of the operation. It will guide you in developing a comprehensive program to ensure quality processes in your brewery. Quality management, an essential guide for brewers, now available from Brewers Publications. Learn more at brewerspublications.com. If you work in retail sales, the restaurant industry, or are a new craft beer enthusiast, or you know someone who is, you have got to check out Beer 101. Beer 101 is an online course created for anyone wanting a quick introduction to the vast world of craft beer. Beer 101 covers the history of beer, brewing ingredients and processes, vital stats like ABV, SRM, IBU and gravity, styles, tasting, glassware, and pairing beer with food. The Beer 101 course is offered by the Brewers Association at craftbeer.com, also home to the truly awesome Beer Style Finder, a visual guide to every beer style. Quickly play with color, bitterness, and alcohol content to interactively explore the entire world of beer styles with a gorgeously designed interface to your favorite beverage. The new Beer 101 course and new Beer Style Finder are only available at craftbeer.com. Craftbeer.com, celebrating the best of American beer. Back to the two guys that know how to turn beer into beer this is brew strong 
Hey, you know. What? You and I, we're both going to be at the Homebrewers Conference in Portland. That's right. Can't Com wait. Coming up end of June. Yeah. We're going to have a, a blast of a time. You, you, me, and uh, Tasty McDowell, we're going to do a panel together. That's right. We are. Yeah, some fun. We're going to sign some books. I don't know. Are we going to be doing a show uh, at the, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's always hard sure. to find time. But. Yes. <laughs> Why not? Right. I would love okay. to. I say yes. Yeah. Just I'm need to good. bring I'm sure some. We can make that happen. Are we going to be taking equipment up there? Is that going to happen? I think so. Yeah. Is Justin planning on doing something? Well, therein lies the question. <laughs> Depends on how he feels. So, John, it might be you and I sitting around my phone and uh <laughs> doing, doing a live uh, like a facebook right. live yeah. right we'll just have everybody <laughs> dial into a conference call and uh we'll just do it over the phone i think that's no 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 i think um he and i had spoken about it briefly and i'm pretty sure we're both intending to set something up while we're there we just need to work out your schedules okay uh, okay that sounds good so we'll do a show too uh so you should make your way out there this is uh all of course thanks to the aha that's been putting on this conference for and it's got to be like close to 40 years now. Oh, and yeah. Um, yeah. Started, in, I think, in 79, I remember right, yeah, or somewhere yeah, thereabouts. Yeah. Coming, coming up on 40 years, and uh, I tell you, everyone I've been to has been absolutely fantastic. I wouldn't miss it uh, for anything. It is the best beer event you are ever going to go to. If you like yeah. beer and brewing beer, there is no better uh, event in the world relating to beer than the conference it's just the people are wonderful you get to share beers talk stories learn new techniques find new gear uh explore new, i mean it's just it's just wonderful absolutely talk, wonderful yeah talking with like-minded people is, yes uh, yes um and uh it's going to be uh, end of june and uh get your say you can they're signing people up now and you do not want to uh, miss out. So um, hotels are available. Um, Portland's a great city. It's easy to get to. It's easy to get around Portland. Even if you don't have a car there, you can just jump on the Met. It takes you most of the places you ever want to go. Um, there's, there's Uber or Lyft. All that stuff is available. Zip cars. Uh, great city to explore. Um, lots of great breweries. Um, lots of great restaurants. Just, just an amazing place. And uh, you should get yourself there. Go go to the HA uh, website and sign up for the conference now. We want to see you out there. Um, and uh, it's just one of those benefits of membership, the uh, AHA conference. So check it out today. Um, let's see. Where were we? We're talking about uh, uh, rests. Like, uh, all right, yeah. so a lot of times people say, hey, um, you know, do I need a beta-glucan rest? Do I need a protein rest? Do I need a... Uh, you know, a frulic sometimes acid rest. Sometimes you just need a restraining order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, what? I, I have, I don't have more than five tops against me. That's right. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, glad you brought that up because uh, beta-glucan, uh, for those that, that you have are, haven't heard of that word before, um, this is a polysaccharide. It is, it is a type of... Uh, sugar starch molecule um, it's a pentosan rather than a hex a hexamer um, in other words it has five sugar units instead of six and uh, these these uh, polysaccharides as they're generally known um, are very gummy and they they make the wort more viscous and that can be a problem when you're trying to lauder your mash you're trying to drain the wort from uh, the grain bed. So what we do is we use a what we call a beta glucan rest uh, that around 135 degrees Fahrenheit, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Crack mm -hmm. open how to brew real quick. Where is that mashing section right here in the middle? Um, Shameless plug. Yeah, sorry. Where did I put it? At? That's not the page. There we go. Beta glucanase. Um, oh, okay. Lower, one, one much lower. Yeah. to 113 or something like that? Yeah, 104 to 118 Fahrenheit. Um, does go down as low as 68. 
and as high as 122. So it is, you know, it is below your protein rest. Your mm -hmm. protein rest so ones are up around 130. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and so let me convert this to C quickly. That would be 40 to 48 degrees C. Um, and a rest for about 15, 20 minutes at these temperatures will break up those gums and really improve the flow of your wort. Mm -hmm. So a uh, very good practice. But how, how, is, how important is that if, uh, if you don't care about the flow of your wort? What if you're batch sparging and you know, you got all the de time uh, in the world well, or um, you know, you're brewing a bag? Right. Right. Or uh, something like that. I mean, is is having the beta glucans hole in your uh, beer a problem? Well, it really doesn't do you any favors um, in terms of. What there's if you no want a gluey no gummy benefit. beer? Yeah, but it doesn't really do you any benefit to yeah. have uh, whole beta glucans floating around your work. Mm -hmm. So even if you're doing brewing a bag, um, you're going to get better extraction. Um, better yield from your mash uh, if you do a beta-glucanase rest. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. uh, a beta-glucanase rest probably is not necessary if you're using between 5 and 10% mm -hmm. of rye or oats or something like this. Usually, those levels can get by just fine without any changes. Okay. If you're going higher than 10%, um, say you know between 10 and 20 you're probably going to want to add, start adding rice hulls. Mm -hmm. And rice hulls are simply the husks from rice. They're, they're inert in the mash, but they will provide uh, extra um, filtering. spacing. Yeah. yeah, filtering capability and spacing and mm -hmm. keeping that mash from compacting and, and clogging up. Yeah, I always found I didn't need any uh, hulls till I got like well past 30%. Even, oh, really? even okay. commercially, we're doing 25% oats, and that's fine. You're still that's able fine. to buy. Yeah. Uh, now, so are you it, doing it's going to depend on the... Rest, no. It's going to depend on the equipment, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, we, I, I don't do any, any other rests. Uh, well, all right. One more question on, on glucans. Is there an alpha glucan? <laughs> uh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, I just jump right to beta? I mean, really? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I don't know gamma ones either, as far as I know. But there might be. I'm not a cellular molecular biologist, so there may be other things that I don't know about. Right. It's happened before. Hey, there you go. All right. Now, what about um, the refined sugars? What about the, uh, you know, the uh, cane sugar, uh, molasses, um, honey? Um, yeah. Things like that. What about those those things that, that you might might add to a to a recipe? Well, honey is is a good one to start with. Honey and sucrose. Um, these are simple sugars that simply add sugar to the work. They add they'll they'll fill up your alcohol because um, they'll, they're almost always fully fermentable. Yeah, they're completely fermentable. They don't add any protein. Um, they will add some some flavors to the beer. I mean, you know, from the production of byproducts, just like normal fermentation does. Um, but you won't get, you know, residual flavor compounds uh, from those like you would from uh, your specialty malts or from less refined sugars like molasses. Molasses definitely has a flavor to it. Um, honey can have a flavor into the beer. But because it is so completely fermentable, it is you know simply fructose and small amounts of other you know glucose and sucrose um, that you know it's 100% fermentable. And a lot of the volatiles that you know you can smell when you sniff honey will be you know essentially scrubbed out of the beer uh, during fermentation. Is sniffing honey anything like sniffing glue? Or? No, although it can be just as irritating to your nasal passages there you go hmm. no like liver damage brain damage no uh -uh. Okay. although if, if the if you, the bee gets stuck in there then uh, that can be a real problem <laughs> okay all right um, what sort of percentages of, of these simple sugars does one use 
Yeah, again, you're in that same ballpark, you know, anywhere 20, maybe even 30 percent or lower to 10 percent, depending on the mm-hmm. the kind of character you want mm-hmm. uh, to make your beer. <clears throat> if you're thinning the body um, for like a double IPA, you know, 10, 15. Um, if you're trying to uh, simply get some color uh, and maybe or a little bump in alcohol, you know, again, uh, 10, 15. If you're going for something that has a significant uh, portion of uh, sugar, like a Belgian triple, mm-hmm. you know, that would be more. That would be uh, 20, 25 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. kind of numbers. Well, and uh, one thing that I was found was a lot of the simple sugars don't have a whole lot of flavor. But there right. are some that are more flavor than they are sugar. So something like uh, molasses. You yeah. tend to get a lot yeah. more flavor from a small amount. And there's really not a huge amount of uh, sugar in there for fermentation. Yeah. And I I mean, it's tempting. A lot of new brewers will uh, pick up uh, molasses and other invert uh, sugar syrups, you know, Lyle's golden syrup. Mm-hmm. Um, uh what is it? There is Mexican sugar cones, um, which the name escapes me at the moment. Uh, other uh, palm sugars. Randy Mosher's book, uh, Radical Brewing, uh, mm-hmm. has a lot of a really good discussion of different brewing sugars that you can experiment with uh, that will contribute, you know, interesting flavors to your beer. Um, I I don't have a palate for a lot of those interesting flavors myself. But uh, many people do, so you know, uh, feel free to experiment with those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I think you know, uh, a lot of times with those sugars, people you know believe that it's going to add this huge you know difference in uh, you know flavor between one and the other. I mean, you know, like uh, the the clear candy sugar versus yeah. just using some some beet sugar. Um, yeah, I, I, I really can't find much of a difference between the two. It's really more, you know, in the imagination, I think. It, well, and the thing that really makes a huge difference is yeast. You know, yes. The type of yeast you use is really, um, you know, and some of them will accentuate more more character of, of the adjuncts you use, and some will, will do less. Um, i tell you one tool for figuring out what you want to use is uh, White Labs. They've uh, introduced a mobile app. And, uh, you know, if you're a home brewer searching for your next strain, a professional brewer placing an order, White Labs mobile app has something for everyone. Uh, key features include an easy-to-navigate ordering system, custom culture calculator to determine the appropriate pitch rates, homebrew store locator up to the minute inventory availability, and more. So you can download the new White Labs mobile app for iPhone or Android by searching White Labs in the App Store or the Play Store today. All right, let's take uh, our final break, and uh, when we get back, let's uh, wrap up our discussion of, uh, oh yeah, Roots and Vegetables uh, when we come back after this. Are you looking for a simple brewing system that's great for all grain brewing, but everything on the market seems to be full of compromises? Blickman Engineering has the answer. The Blickman Brew Easy All Grain Brewing System. The Brew Easy is a complete system with easy upgrades and a beautiful compact design, perfect for any size brewing location. At its core, the Brew Easy is built on two gorgeous Blickman Boilermaker brew kettles, a high temperature march pump, and either a top tier gas burner or the new boil coil electric heater. The Brew Easy adapter lid allows the pots to stack on top of each other, forming an efficient, strong, and compact brewing setup that comes in 5, 10, and 20-gallon batch sizes. Upgrade your BrewEasy system with full automated control by adding a Blickman Tower of Power temp controller and make moving around easy with the Blickman Kettle Cart. The BrewEasy is modular. If you already own a Boilermaker kettle, you can build your BrewEasy by purchasing just the modules you need. The new BrewEasy all-grain brewing system. See it today at BlickmanEngineering.com and brew with Blickman quality on your new BrewEasy. Since the first time the Brewing Network microphones turned on, More Beer was behind it. More Beer sponsors the programming on the BN because, like you, they love brewing. And like the Brewing Network, they love sharing their knowledge. Morebeer.com isn't just a website to place your next equipment or ingredient order. Morebeer.com also gives you access to free beer information that will make you a better brewer. 
Go to morebeer.com and click into the Learning Center. You'll find podcasts, technical facts, video tutorials, and more, including access to The Buzz, More Beer's social network of more than 5,000 members. And some of them might even be crazier about beer than you are. Get over to morebeer.com today and take advantage of The Buzz, The Forum, The Learning Center, and make sure you're signed up to receive the newest More Beer catalog. More Beer, bringing you absolutely everything for beer making. Learning to brew has never been so disgusting. This is Brew Strong. All right, we're back. Talking about adjuncts and things like, you know, large cucumbers. Um, check out adamandeve.com today and get just a 50% off just about any item when you uh, type the offer code Jamel. It's a work call. J A Y L uh, for the offer code upon checkout. Uh, when you do, you get three free DVDs, a free extra gift, and free shipping. So all you got to do is use the offer code Jamel at adamandeve.com. You're going to get one uh, item at just uh, almost any item at about 50 at 50% off. Free shipping, f three free D DVDs, a free extra gift. Um, you can't go wrong. Use the offer code Jamel, J A M I L, at adamandeve.com today. All right. Um, yeah. Our, uh, our veggie mumbles. Yes, fruits and veggies. Mm hmm. Fruits, uh, and veggies. fruits are fruits are your, are a good source of uh, flavors mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and fermentable sugars. Mm -hmm. um, the question that everybody asks is, well, how much is this fruit going to add to the gravity of the beer? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's a good question, but um, it helps. Uh, you can kind of estimate it by right. the weight of the fruit mm -hmm. and um, its bricks value. Mm -hmm. Well, and most of the to, most of the sh the fruits are relatively low in sugar, unless you get to like wine grapes or something like that. So right. the Brix is you know six to ten maybe, and yep. if you're making a small beer, then it can raise the value of the of the alcohol. Um, but if it's a bigger beer, uh, generally it'll lower it. So it's only certain types of fruit that'll actually raise it. It's they'll generally lower your your alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot of people will add these uh, fruits to uh, to the beer after the first fermentation. Do a secondary fermentation with them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which uh, helps preserve some more of the aromas. Right. One of the things that we've been doing at Heretic recently is. Um, we will ferment the fruit by itself oh. um, using just calil yeast, whatever. Um, and then right. we will transfer that into the beer, into the fermented beer. Ah. And I feel like we kind of get the best fruit character that way. Interesting. Okay. Do you add um, uh, like Fermade K or other yeast nutrients to, uh, when you do that? We haven't, we haven't needed, must? we haven't needed to, um, you know, we do a lot of nutrient additions on our, our yeast and on our worts. Um, I see. So it's kind of nutrienced before. And yeah. And so we'll just take a portion of the yeast out of one of the fermenters and send it over to a tank full of the, the fruit and let it uh, work the fruit down. And at first I was thinking, you know, it would be a, you know, an issue with the types of sugars, with the nutrients and, and all that. But it's actually tends to be such a low um, ABV and a low bricks uh, a solution. Uh, I thought, you know, maybe the pH would be too low. All this would stop um, the yeast. But we haven't found uh, a fruit that uh, the yeast would not ferment at this point. I mean, you ferment grapefruit juice. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, all that stuff. Uh Somebody was telling me you could ferment uh, Mountain Dew. I'm thinking, you know, you think all the preservatives and stuff, why would that <laughs> ferment? It just ferments. Hmm. Um, right. Yeah. Right, it doesn't make it taste any better, but. Right, right, right. It puts alcohol in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting that all these things that, you know, because people just haven't generally done this a lot. 
you know, or they use wine yeast or something like that. But yeah, most of these fruits that we use, they'll just ferment with dale yeast. It's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, have you done uh, a pumpkin beer or, you know, with, uh, you know, vegetable starch sources? I have. Um, I used to grow pumpkins in my backyard. I would uh, do that. But that I would bake the pumpkins in the oven. So it kind of produced yeah. some, okay. you know, more flavor and caramelly. Yeah. Uh, soften them up. And then uh, we'd throw it in the mash. Yeah. And really, that that brings up a really good point when it comes to using uh, these uh, vegetables, uh, root root vegetables, and so on, like uh, turnips, potatoes, carrots, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, cook them first, uh, mm -hmm. because again, you're trying to get those starches uh, soluble, mm -hmm. and pre-cooking will really greatly uh, increase their uh, extraction in the mash. Mm -hmm. um, as you'd mentioned with the pumpkin, a lot of these, uh, you know vegetables really don't contribute much flavor at all to the beer mm -hmm. unless you do something like uh, toasting them in the oven you know for some caramelization and right. such or use use a just an insane amount of them yeah yeah uh and then they all need to go into the uh, mash right that's right they need to go into the mash uh so those soluble starches can then be converted to sugars by the, the mm -hmm. malt enzymes mm-hmm well, and uh, now what about our friends that, that might have, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're doing extract and they want to make a, an oatmeal stout or okay. they want to make well, a dry Irish stout and they want to use flaked barley or flaked oats? Yeah. Um, the problem with your flaked grains is they are intended to be mashed. They're intended to be, they are simply just starch. Mm-hmm. And adding starch to an extract beer um, is not really going to accomplish anything, unless it's an enzymatic malt extract, which you don't see as, see very often these days. Mm -hmm. um, there was a company in, in the U.K. that made some mm -hmm. uh, a while back, but it, I really don't see it now. Um, so, yeah, you really can't use flaked grains. You can't steep flaked grains like you do specialty grains. But you uh, could do a little flavors. mini mash. You could you could take you a small can do a mini pot, mash, though. Yes. Um, heat up some water in there, uh, get some crushed uh, two row, throw that in, and then your 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 other grains, and just kind of stir like, it, yeah. mix it, let it let it sit there for a while. Don't even really you know care too much about. it. <laughs> see, eventually the the liquid should kind of clear up, and um, you, know, you can uh, then. I guess you could throw the whole thing into your other steep or you could uh, drain it out and uh, just transfer yeah. the liquid. Yeah, just, I mean, uh, this is where brew in a bag uh, methods become very handy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, throw these in a small uh, grain bag mm -hmm. or, a, or I should say a large grain bag. Um, yeah, with, with the, you know, pound or two of base malt mm -hmm. and your half pound or pound of uh, oats, mm -hmm. you know, ground, rolled oats. Um, yeah, that will convert... Um, just you know, heat heat up your water to around 150 degrees. And measure it with your thermometer, uh, and yeah, that that'll make a nice little mini mash there. Mm -hmm. um, now, what about um, uh, I never tried this or thought about it, but what about uh, you know, just a little pot on your stove top, and you throw the oats in there, and you throw or you throw your flake barley in there, and you get it up to you know 150 or whatever it is, and then you throw in like a beano tablet or a or some some beano drops, you know, some oh. uh, some alpha amylase or whatever, and uh, and use that to kind of uh, uh, break down the starches, and then you could heat it up the rest of the way, kill off the enzymes, and then use that. Yeah, beano. I'm not sure the enzyme spectrum on beano. I know it will break up uh, raffinose. Mm -hmm. Um. Which I think is like a five or six uh, chain glucose. I don't know what it'll do as far as uh, producing fermentable sugars. Mm -hmm. well, you might be able to get you know some some uh, appropriate uh, enzyme drops from your your local yeah. homebrew shop. Uh, homebrew shop, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's uh, yeah there are amylase enzyme preparations on the market now mm -hmm. um they're both liquid and and powder form 
So uh, check those out. Go to your local homebrew shop and ask them for amylase enzymes that mm-hmm. you can use, and those will help you do a mini mash right. on the stove like that. There you go. All right, anything else to cover on uh, adjuncts? I know it's kind of mm-hmm. a quick whirl, whirlwind tour. Yeah, but you know, I think um, embrace the world of adjuncts because mm-hmm. really you are greatly expanding the, the number of different styles of beer that you can produce. Yeah, it's a you know a great way to uh, enhance your toolkit. Um, yeah. Nothing wrong with adjuncts. Um, if you're using adjuncts to to cheat in some way, I guess would be the only time you wouldn't use adjuncts, right? So you're, right. you're trying to just make a cheaper beer. Um, you know, when you're using an adjunct to improve the quality of your beer, then it's a proper use of an adjunct. And there's That's no, right. you know, question about that. Yeah, so, no need to be shy. Right, there you go. All right, good show, John. Uh, great information. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening live, uh, stay tuned. We're going to do a... Uh, a uh, Q&A show that covers uh, bottling, bottle conditioning, uh, a lot of interesting questions around uh, bottling your beer. Uh, if you have your own questions, you can send them to uh, Bruce Strong at thebrewingnetwork.com, or if you're listening live, you can uh, dial in at 888-something uh, uh, beer. 401 beer. 401 beer. There you go. 888-401 beer. <laughs> and Because uh, we got questions last, last time, I'm just saying. Uh, maybe maybe it'll happen again. It maybe, could happen. Maybe lightning would strike. We'll see. Mm. Uh, if you like lightning to keep striking, I would suggest you check out all our fine sponsors, Blickman Engineering, Great Fermentations, White Labs, the AHA, um, uh, Grog Tag. Uh, check them all out. Support them all. And that helps keep this show on the air. Uh, you can also go to the Brewing Network uh, store, thebrewingnetwork.com slash store, and uh, buy some goodies there. And that also helps the bottom line of the Brewing Network. Till then, everybody, Bruce Strong. Bruce Strong, everyone. <laughs>